Welcome to iHeartBeat. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek. I can finally say it. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's all we can do. Yeah, I Never think right. that's about it. Right. Before we get yeah. sued, mm-hmm. we're we're in fair use. We're in fair use. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're oh. fine. We're fine. As long as we do thirty seconds, we're good. I think we're mm-hmm. good. Yep. <laughs> uh, but no one wants to hear that for full thirty seconds from no. us either. So for for those of our listeners that like our psychology episodes, you are in luck. Yes. Yes, we're oh, going to yeah. do a deep dive into one Peter Parker, my mm. favorite comic book character of all time. Really? really? Yes. More than the that. thing. More than the thing. Wow. Oh, okay. Yes. Nice. Then I shouldn't have given you the game show. Oh, you absolutely <laughs> should have. <laughs> okay, so we are, we are doing uh, psychology of Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. And um, yeah, let's talk Let's talk to the panel here. I'm Dub and I'm your producer. And to my left... I'm Blize, the YouTube guy. <laughs> who in a way might also be kind of the producer. Yeah. Yeah, because he produces co-producer, co- co-producer, co-producer, hey. the video Assistant co-producer. Producer. The vid- he's the, the he's the video, video, video producer, I'm the video guy, I'm the AV guy. There you go, <laughs> AV, guy. Oh, AV guy. I like that. Okay, uh, my name is your friendly neighborhood Kaj. Kaj. Yeah. Uh, I do stuff. <laughs> I do stuff and things. He's so and things excited and stuff. for this. Yep. I climb on walls. I swing. I I do. I I have a very quick wit. Whether it's funny or not, that's <laughs> that, that's the other that's, question. <laughs> in my mind, it's funny. So, um, and I have a rogues gallery. I just uh, ah, yeah, that's true. Right? I think I'm in it. Yeah, yes. I, I, I was curious on if, yes. if everyone at this table yes. is. Mm. It's like, mm. but I won't tell you who's mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know if you were listening to a forty. <laughs> the magic of editing. Oh, yes, uh, I am PB and Jason. I am a, one of the show founders and a writer and a geek, and I absolutely love the summer I had and the vacations I had, and I'm glad to be back to the show. This being the second show after missing a slew of them. Yeah, a couple. So, yeah. Nice. I'm, uh, I'm very glad to be back. Nice. So are you, are you glad that I waited on this one and didn't put you on Harley instead? I probably would have murdered you. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Hoobie 2, are we, are we still complaining about that? No, no, no. It's, no, it's all good. You, okay. you, you let me be on my show about my favorite comic book characters, so I am thrilled. Okay. I'm pretty new, so I haven't said enough. She shouldn't have won. Oh, God, stop. Nice. <laughs> stop. It is unanimous. Except for our listeners, and you know, they're kind no, of the important you, ones, you know. so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> iHeart Geek today is brought to you by Uncle Ben's Rice. With great rice comes great responsibility. Wow. What, you like that? Wow. What time What time did you go to bed for thinking of that one? About <laughs> <laughs> 3, 3.30? <laughs> Actually, I think it was roughly 10 minutes before you got here. Oh it, it, it absolutely was. You know, but you know... Well played. That was yeah. I. I did. I, I'm. I'm like writing notes. Then you said that. And I just look up. Like wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. You wouldn't have thought of that, would you? Mm-mm, mm-mm. No, honestly, I had the first half of it for about three, four days ago. And with then great I rice. It. With great rice. With great rice. That's where. It came. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Okay, so let's see. Let's jump right into it and let's get into a game show. Here's a generic game show for you. All right, game show time, kiddos. I and hate you. Already? <laughs> Already. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to that, by the way, but it's I, okay. I'd hope so. We're friends, but we, we are, have a we weird relationship yeah, like it's that. It's really bizarre. <laughs> There's a lot of hatred in our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of aggression and animosity, as well as uh, affection and occasional hugs. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's see. We're doing a game show about Spider-Man, Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. Now, as you all know, Peter Parker is very well known in the Marvel Universe. He's been all over the place, teamed up with a lot of people. There are a lot of people in the Marvel Universe that have opinions about Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. So what we're going to do is I came up with nine statements from characters in the Marvel Universe and their opinions of Spider-Man. And these, these questions or these statements all have a potential for three points. If you know which superhero said this, and uh, you get a point, and if you know their real name, you get two points. So it's a total of three points. For instance, if Captain America were one of the answers, it would be Captain America, Steve Rogers. Correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So are you guys ready for this game show? 
As ready yeah. as we're going to be. Maybe. Okay, so here are nine statements from Marvel characters. Statement number one. You think he'd be grateful and quiet, but no, he rambled on about bald eagles being communist. I wanted to drop him, but my better nature kicked in. Dub. Um, it was Captain America slash Steve Rogers or Stan Lee. Uh, incorrect. Okay. On both. Um, I put Vulture and then I can't remember his first name, but Toombs. Adrian Toombs. Adrian um, Toombs, yeah. Incorrect on both. All right. Uh, I... Took a shot in the dark, and I put Doc Ock, Otto Octavius. Um, incorrect on both. That would be Sam Wilson oh. as Captain America. Okay. I got All right. Okay. All right. Wah, wah. <laughs> Number two. He can be careless and annoying, but we've had each other's back more times than I can count. We are both New York to the core. I trust Peter, and he trusts me, sometimes more than he probably should. Once in a while, we even have a bit of fun, like racing each other down buildings. Dub. Hawkeye slash Clint Barton or Stan Lee? Incorrect and incorrect. Okay. Uh, I put Human Torch, Johnny Storm. Incorrect and incorrect. Oh, I'm torn. Are you all out of faith? No. This is something real? Lying on the floor somewhere. Whatever. Because I, I just got another. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. You're gonna go with the answer you wrote seat. down. Is what you're gonna do. I have a fine. <laughs> I put Black Cap, and I don't know her real name. Uh, her real name is Felicia Hardy. Felicia Hardy. But it's not either one of those. Okay. The answer is Matt Murdock. Oh, I should have oh, said the second Daredevil. one. Yeah, that's a good I, one. Yeah. I legitimately, I'm like, I bet that might be Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? You should have. Didn't even Sorry. Think of Sorry. Can I Gotta get a half point for thinking of it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number three. This is a very low scoring game show so far. All right. Number three. Worst the little ever. punk. <laughs> I should have squashed the bug years ago. Thing is, though, I got to hand it to the kid. He's fast, he runs his mouth, and he's lasted against me longer than most. He's even stopped me temporarily. Nobody does that to me. Dub. The Incredible Hulk slash Bruce Banner In or Stan Lee. Okay, incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. <laughs> Blies. It's How is that incorrect? The Juggernaut. Correct. Ah, and the I Juggernaut's name is? I don't know his name. Uh, oh, oh um, I, can, I can pull that. Oh, oh man! It's, Hold on. So, what is your answer, Kosh? It's not that. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's I put Wolverine James Howlett. Okay, it is. It is that is incorrect. Incorrect. It is the Juggernaut Kane Marco. Kane Marco. Kane yeah. Marco. Man. Okay. There's points on the board. I love it. All Ooh. right. Number four. He's an undisciplined nerd, but he knows the game. He's a hero I can trust, even though he flirts with me constantly. I don't know. He's helped me out a lot, so maybe one date wouldn't be so bad. He might even be cute under that mask. Dub. Black Cat slash Felicia Hardy or Stanley. Incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Blige. I've never gotten uh, a zero before. I bet Spider Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Incorrect, incorrect. I got the same thing. Man. Incorrect, incorrect. That would be one Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel. Oh, what? Oh, man. Okay. Huh. This is now, all this this is goes what goes on you, in Jason's Now, let me mind. just say, this is what you have to remember. Um... I pulled all of these mm -hmm. quotes from something that happened in comics, okay? okay? And after one more day, was it, or the when he when Mephisto made him forget Mary Jane? Yeah, uh, he was flirting with everybody, and mm -hmm. that's that's where that that's comes where from. that came from. Right. Okay. Correct. All right, number five. Uh, his powers aren't anywhere as good as mine. I have the better costume. I'm just better. Besides, the little creep won't stop flirting with me. I don't care what the others say. Dub. Deadpool slash Wade Wilson or Stan Lee. Uh, incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Blies. Oh, man, I put Deadpool Wade Wilson too. Um, incorrect. Dang. I went to the other side and put Venom, Eddie Brock. Incorrect. That would be one Jessica Drew, Spider Woman. Oh, man. Okay. Mm. Oh. This is the worst game in history. So far, yeah. Okay, we're on number six, correct? Yes, number yes. six. Never have I wanted someone to lose their voice permanently more than Parker. Yeah, we've argued we've punched each other. I fantasize about killing him even though I never would. But we know each other completely. He's a good kid. And the best thing about him is that he believes in me. Not everyone does. Dub. Wolverine slash Logan. Correct. Or Stan Lee. Oh. Correct. Oh, really? And incorrect because it's not Logan. It's Howlett. James Howell. Oh, come on. It's his real name. Logan would have counted I before. I would have agreed. Yep. His I'll tell you what. I'll give you, I'll give you two. Okay. Okay. Two. Is that, Logan, it, that's fine. I'll give you two on that one. That kind of counts. 
All right, Blyze. He's got to give me 2-2 two, because two, I put Wolverine Logan. All right. <laughs> two for Blyze and All Kaj. right, you got to give me 2-2 two, because two, I put Deadpool, Wade Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Uh, didn't work? Okay. All right. Number seven. <laughs> Egomaniac Blowhard. He thinks he's so cool. Cooler than me. Can you believe that? Yeah, we've hung out, teamed up, worked together. He's my friend, sure. But cooler than me? No way. Dub. Iceman, Bobby Drake, or Stan Lee. No, no, no. Blast. I put Johnny Storm, Human Torch. Correct. Yeah. Okay, oh. with the cool thing, really? Johnny Come Storm, on. super cool Ice- guy. I- no, Ice there Man, wasn't an Bobby illusion Drake. there. He was actually, because Johnny Storm does think he's cool. So does Bobby I, Drake. <laughs> and I, you, put, I put Eddie Brock, Venom. You put Eddie Brock, Venom. Okay, gosh, uh, man, I'm sorry. All right. Um, it kind of should be. <laughs> we are on number eight. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Number eight. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him more than all these other ones above me and the one below me. I'll shoot you in the face if you try to take my Spider-Man. Maybe I'll shoot him in the face, and then you won't want him. Somebody's getting shot in the face. I'm hungry. Bye. Off to shoot faces. Gwen Poole. Uh, Gwen Stacy. Incorrect. Or Stanley. Incorrect. But uh, Deadpool Wade Wilson. Correct. Oh. Deadpool Wade Wilson. Correct. Because he has a fan, he has a fascination was, yeah. with, with Spider Man. I was so close. Kaj gets on the board. Very yeah. good. My two duplicates <laughs> paid off. <laughs> All right, and the last one the last one is number nine. The bug is worth watching, even if beneath me. While never coming close to being a threat, he is an annoyance. But one can't help but admire his path to success. Even if he's of little concern, I'll be watching. Dub. The Watcher. Incorrect. Or Stanley. I, I put Uatu the Watcher. Incorrect. I'm gonna go on a limb. Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. Good guess, but incorrect. Uh, the answer would be one Victor Vaughn Doom, Doctor Doom. Wow. Okay. That okay. Then that that's that's a close to the worst game in history, and I, I think agree. I can say that. One. I feel pretty good about it. All right. So let us tally up. <laughs> if four is if you feel good. Let us tally up these scores. I'm actually surprised that that one was as hard as it was. To be honest. Um, Dub comes in with two points. Yay. Kaj comes in with three points. Yes. And Blyze is our definitive winner with eight points. Woo-hoo. Well done, Blyze. Yay. 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 Blyze. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's jump right on and we're, let's talk the history of Spider Man. Um, got some factoids off the internet from. Our good buddy Blyze here pulled these up for me. So if there's anything you guys want to add as we go, please All right. throw it out. Was created by the legend himself, Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. Um, With a little bit of uh, Jack Kirby. Mm-hmm. He's, what, he was involved in that was process he? big time. Yeah. I'm sure he was. I'm oh, they were all. sure Marvel back then was just like a... Just a big Just place. you do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first appeared in Amazing Fantasy 15 on August 1962. Uh, the book last sold at auction for $1.1 million, the highest recorded comic book grade of 9.6. Hmm, wow. Crazy. Um, yeah. yeah. If you get Comixology, you can get it for like free, literally. <laughs> the original copy. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just at that point, it's an anomaly how something went from. What, what was the year? 62. 62 to now mm-hmm. and stayed in a 9.6 condition. That's, That's a near perfect condition. Mm-hmm. And for it to go that long, it's I've it's always crazy. said that like if uh, the DeLorean thing on Back to the Future were real, one of the horrible things I would do oh, yeah. would be mm-hmm. go back and get Action Comics number one, oh, yep. yeah. Amazing mm-hmm. Fantasy 15, and mm-hmm. Detective Comics number one. Yep. Yeah. Now... <laughs> Yeah, and then sell them, and well, then yeah. sell them. Oh yeah, because yes. we're you got to get two. We're two of each, so you can no, keep no, no, one, no. sell one. Get two <laughs> copies, yeah. and then you keep one for yourself. And, and I wouldn't even keep these. one. I just sell them because I could get them on Comicsology for free. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not you know what it says? <laughs> exactly. Wow, capitalist there. <laughs> and, and by the way, that was the last ep- issue of Amazing Fantasy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. is oh, well, and it was it was a side thing too, right? It was uh, they had the story, they had Amazing uh, Amazing Fantasy, and then like it was a two or three page page thing at the end of spider-man if i'm no it was it was a full story story. we covered this on yeah there was there was 
Amazing Fantasy was like a multiple mm-hmm. noir. It was a noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of and then that was just happened to be Spider Man. It's like they were going to cancel it anyway. So and said, the, well, and let the, me try this out. And I don't remember the head's name at that time, but they're like, "All right, fine. You guys can do your stupid little Spider Man story. We're canceling anyway." Yeah, because spider, spiders are stupid. No one will like spiders. And then all of a sudden, yeah, they read that and it just blew up. Like yeah. everybody wanted the comic thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, right. Yeah, in the early '60s, teenage characters were always placed in the role of sidekick or supporting character. Spider Man was the first to break the barrier and place a high school student as the main role of superhero, giving a young audience a character to really relate to. And really I think this to. is the most important part of Spider-Man. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If, if you had if you had a... If he would have been 20, he, we would not know who Spider-Man right. is. As we've said so. before, if you had a pyramid of the top three heroes, and I would even make it a square and you could add a fourth. Like you have um, <laughs> Superman is the epitome of the hero. Batman. Batman is the epitome of the vigilante. Spider-Man is the epitome. Yeah, that's the Mount Rushmore. Is the epitome of the everyman. And I would actually probably give a nod to Wonder Woman being the epitome of the female, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the that's, well, every, well, every like kid, teenager too, because yes. that's it was so o- different. Not only do does he have like his superhero problems, and they very much put in his problems of being in school and, and having like, no being money, a bully and having no mm-hmm. money, and you know, girl problems, and Aunt May that like, right. uh, keeping his secret uh, secret identity away from her, and mm-hmm. so, yeah, yeah. There, I mean, there, there's a lot to what every kid goes through without the superpowers, of course, but there are. There's a lot of um, parallels to be drawn as sure. well, but we'll mm-hmm. get into that as we go. Um, he has been ripped from the comic book pages and appeared in all sorts of media from television, movies, novels, video games, and real life appearances on Wall Street and children's hospitals, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys knew this, the most popular um, hero that kids want at hospitals is Spider-Man. I can mm-hmm. believe and it. It's mm-hmm. been that way yeah. since his inception. Mm-hmm. Right. Since and it's interesting because his whole, the whole character of Peter Parker is actually based on a very specific psychology, mm-hmm. which is why this is a good, the good episode. And that psychology, that very specific emotion that is analyzed by psychologists everywhere, which is guilt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. guilt, guilt at being irresponsible with something he was given and didn't treat the way he should. Well, this first. this this leads us into our first really deep dive question. Right. How has the emotional baggage of Uncle Ben affected the entire psyche of Peter? I mean, you just hit on it right mm-hmm. there. It's the guilt. If there was no uh, Ben Parker issue in that the first ep- issue ever, honestly, he would be a boring character. Well, he would have gone on to do professional wrestling. Which is what he did in the mm-hmm. book, and that's what he would have done. He yeah. would have been, been. He would have been a show off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And he this kept him egotistical. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He wouldn't have the humility. That Arrogance. He does it now. kept him humble. Yeah. But it also kept him unsuccessful. I think, because he was more worried about trying to please a dead man than ever trying to. Um, no. To get ahead. No. 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 no, 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 no. no, no. Well, hold on. Hold on. Give me a second on this one. Okay. Because like when you look at when Doc Ock took over as Spider Man. It's, that's his years later. Everything that Spider Man did, he created a whole. I mean, there's there was a different psyche there, of course, but he cleaned up the entire street and he was able to make millions of dollars for himself as Spider Man because I mean he, they have a very similar intelligence, but because Spider Man is not organized, Peter is not an organized guy. He's too worried about facing one at a time. He never looks at the big picture. Because of that guilt, he has to get that save that one person. Right. Doc Ock, when he was Spider Man, was able to see the big picture. Okay, well, let's save a thousand people instead of saving one person. Well, I don't think it's I don't think it's guilt. I think it's just they they try to keep Spider Man into a I don't want to say naive, but try to keep him in the teenager's mentality that he's not he he's kind of an adult, but he's not really he's a young adult. Where Doc Ock is a as a full grown adult that. Like you said, I agree with you on that. He looks at the big picture. Instead of saving one person, he'll mm-hmm. save a thousand people. So that's kind of, I don't necessarily think it's, I, I think that like he does, well, and not only just Uncle Ben, but there's been several other characters where Gwen. he has failed miserably. Mm-hmm. And, right. So, okay. So what I was going to say, based on you said about pleasing, about always want to please mm-hmm. a dead man. The the pro, the thing about that where I disagree is let us remember 
Who was it who said, with great power comes great responsibility? Who said that? That was Ben. Correct. Mm -hmm. That was Uncle Ben. So those words became his mantra, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so he was trying to live up to those words, not necessarily plea, but to those words that Uncle Ben said. Now, that put Peter putting pressure on himself because when you stop and think about it, Spider-Man is not the most powerful hero in the Marvel Universe, but he's incredibly powerful, Mm -hmm. okay? So he is always keeping that power in check. You talk about his more narrow focus. I think that has a lot to do with him keeping himself in check, keeping himself in check. Um, Dr. Octopus, with great power, comes all the very useful ways that I can use it. Mm -hmm. That's Doc Ock. But as as when he was Spider-Man, he was trying to live by that mantra as well. He could say he really was right. Oh, I'm sure he was trying to do right. He was trying to do good. He was, but he didn't have the whole responsibility part attached to the power. Is Spider Man responsible? Would you? He tries. I think he tries to be. Want Peter Parker? If you're going out of town, this is I mean bizarre thing. You're going out of town for a month. Do you want Peter Parker to watch your house? No, he's going to forget to lock the house. He's going to leave the door open. He's going to let anybody who wants to come in stay in because, you know, he feels bad for them. I, don't I think, think that's a part of him being a kid. That's just, But even that, now, he's not a kid anymore in the comics. He's he's in his 30s now. Yeah, but and then but he's also has grown. I don't think that that question of would you want him to watch your house for a month, the Peter Parker now? Sure. The Peter Parker when he first got his powers and everything? No, because no. he was just a kid. But now he runs a billion-dollar company. Right. He runs Parker Tech. Right. And it, it, you all, uh, he often runs it into the ground. Well, yeah. Is he, did he rebuild he it back up? Well because I think, yeah, he, it tanked, didn't it? It tanked. Yeah, it, it tanked. tanked. Did it? Did it, because did it. he is not good at it. Mm-hmm. He's not good at the big picture. And he's, and he, he's the one at a time. Well, and he's and he doesn't want to be. I think he's got the same. When he did have Parker Tech, he came. He ran into the same um, obstacles that Tony Stark did with all the technology that he had been uh, creating. Now it was falling into the wrong hands, and he was like, "I just don't want to. Like, I don't want that. I'll just make my own tech and not have to worry right. about anybody else getting their hands on so it." So that's either. not him running it into the ground. Per se, that's just him making a decision, kind of like what Tony Stark did, of at I least think, in the movie era, right. that, where he, blew, he doesn't want to make. His own, he blew up the building. Didn't I don't he? remember what, exactly what happened, but literally, he it was running into the ground. What? Uh, unlike, unlike, let, let's let's take Batman for example. You take a uh, Bruce Wayne, and he still does his Batman thing, but he knows how to get to the meet to the the board meetings, and he knows how to run the company. And he keep, lets other people do it. Well, he does, but he's <laughs> always there. He's always the face. Uh, Peter can't. He does. He can't grasp it. And that was that was what was the downfall of both Horizon and uh, Parker right. Tech. Well, yeah, he didn't have. The, oh gosh, I can't. I'm well, so Peter's tired. Peter's. He, he needed to worry about his uh, his Peter. And he's more. always insecure. It's one thing about Peter. It's right. he never yeah. seems to shake yeah. that, even uh, growing up and successful. Mm-hmm. But that's like, part. He's always of, I think a self doubter. Still goes back to to Ben. Could yeah, I, I can yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. And one thing, I think that just I think honestly I think that they keep him in that pigeonhole because if they if if Peter does grow up to a certain age, like if he's like you said he's like he's not interesting anymore. He's like twenty eight thirty, but then he that he doesn't appeal to kids anymore, mm-hmm. and that's what got him his start to begin with is that kids, teenage kids, teenagers got uh, related to him like oh this could be me if I had super here if I had superpowers yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a tough case, yeah, because heroes got to they got to age somewhat, mm-hmm. you know. And th- I, th- I think they've done actually a very good job of aging him mm-hmm. without making mm-hmm. him old, but he's still at that age that he could go out and drink and blah blah. Yeah, right. But he chooses not to. I mean, he would never want to ever give that bad example. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, now, that, do you think that he, they've actually passed the torch to Miles now, since he is the he's kind of now Parker's age? I think they've tried to pass the torch to Miles, but I don't think that. Public has expect ex- accepted Miles to be when you when you think of Spider Man you don't think of Miles. I disagree to with that. Us, I think the younger I, I think even now you my think, kids think of Peter they don't think of. I Miles. think this is the toughest thing in comics 
Because they've tried to do it with Batman. They've tried to do it with Captain America. They've tried to do it with Spider-Man. There's such difficulty passing the torch because here's the thing. You have to expect the backlash when you first pass it. You have to Mm -hmm. be willing to deal with the falling sails and all of the, oh my God, you can't. Mm. You got to do basically what they did with Ultimate Nick Fury. Okay? They kept him in, kept him in, kept him in, despite the backlash that happened at first. They kept him around, kept him around, you know, promoted him, put him in good stories, good stories, good stories, and then he became accepted. Now he's even more accepted than the original Caucasian Half Nick off. Fury. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, but they don't have the patience today to do a proper torch pass. But I tell you what they're doing, what I think is more acceptable, especially to, you know, old fuddy duddy comic creators like me, is they've created the Ultimates line. And that way you have that other universe. And if you want to follow this Miles, that's awesome. You know, I, he's had some interesting stories. Not my Spider-Man, but, you know, a lot of people like him. Cool. But they've also kept him, it kept Peter in this universe. And I, I think that's the proper way to do things. Right. Except Miles is in this universe now. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Because yeah, the ultimate universe after collapsed. After Seeker Wars. They, uh, yeah. But I think I, I would have I to say that okay. Miles is becoming a, the more mainstream, not the more mainstream Spider-Man, but alongside Peter Parker with this new generation and for the same reason. I think they're doing the same thing with Miles Morales that they did with Nick Fury. He... They put him in a story. He doesn't do so well. They keep putting him in a story. And he's he's doing better and better, and he's becoming more known um, with the smaller. not yeah. Maybe not your kids, but with the smaller generation, he's becoming that Spider-Man. You told me earlier today, and we'll get into this later, what's your favorite Spider-Man movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, and, it, and he is not my favorite Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, but, but I still but love the movie. But that's your favorite movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that being one of the best spider-man movies that's made people are going to attribute him with that Mm -hmm. so when they see his merchandise or when they see him in a comic book he'll someone who may not read a bunch of spider-man comic books may look at a book and be like hey that's miles morales from that spider-man movie i love that movie i'm gonna pick this book up and i think we're just gonna start seeing that be known and when that happens then peter can start to age a little bit more and become the more experienced spider-man Right. And the nice thing that you could do if people would, again, if they would be patient about it, Mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily kill off. You don't have to kill Peter Parker. Mm -mm. You know, he could be a mentor figure. He could Mm -hmm. be a guest. He could every now and then put on the spider suit. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. it could happen. It's just. So you're you're looking at more of a Batman Beyond type. Exactly. Yeah. I wish that they would have actually. I don't want to see Peter that old, though. Well, they, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, they have Spider Man twenty ninety nine, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is not, no, not even a, yeah. there is no Peter in that. Yeah, yeah. Is there? It's, 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 totally it's just it's, it's at totally that point it's a mantle. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. the mantle. I mean, Batman Beyond. Now you know when they tried to make Dick Grayson Batman, I actually thought that was a mistake because he's Nightwing. Okay? He already did his evolution from Robin to Nightwing and is mm-hmm. one of the most successful characters. They should have picked a different Batman. Yeah. No, it they honestly needs to grow up and be Damien. Oh. That makes more sense than anything. Maybe. I, I, but I, I did I did appreciate the homage. Yeah, the, you're right. I do. He he was Nightwing, but it was almost like he was the first son. Even though Damien is his real son, yeah. he was the first son of Bruce Wayne, and it it should have went to Dick Grayson first. I guess though, when you when you work so hard to get out of the Robin, when you didn't want to yeah, be in right. the shadow of Batman, to then become Batman. Well, it's, like, well, it's like the Godfather. Yeah. But you know, you just, back to Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. <laughs> We've done Batman before. Wait, 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 keep, going, keep pulling you back in. All right. I know. Right. <laughs> so um, what I want, actually want to talk about, there has been so many um, costume evolutions with, with Spider-Man, Peter. Sure. I mean, mm-hmm. a ton. What, what are some of your favorites? The one on the Todd McFarlane cover. That's, oh, yes. That's, that's my favorite. The one on Torment. Yes, is my fa- is my favorite nice. Spider Man suit. Anything Tom McFarlane. I think it's the black it's the black webbing, isn't it? Under the arms, uh, black webby. Oh, basically he's crouched down with a whole bunch of like the webbing behind, behind him. him and, but then he does have the. Down. I think he does have the underarm black uh, l- l- webbing. A little bit, yeah, little bit and his right. and his webs are more of like a like a stringy, stringy, gluey yeah, kind yeah. of mixed up together. I've yeah. always loved symbiote Spider Man, black Spider Man. Black Spider Man. Oh, it just I, looks so 
sleek and cool and yeah. And just one well, just even the way top, the spider set everything. And well and then Venom too. So yeah, because it got passed on to Venom too. Yeah. So. But it doesn't look as cool on Venom as it looks on, on Peter. Because Peter's smaller, he's got right. that thinner frame. Right, right. Uh Venom Venom is just like bulky. Well Peter also did have a black suit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean after yeah. Venom. He mm-hmm. did adopt a black suit mm-hmm. for right, a while. Right, right, right. Yeah. Iron Spider's pretty cool too. Yeah. Oh, Do you uh, are you comics Iron Spider or MCU Iron Spider? Comic. I, mean, I like MCU. Other, other red, not, not red and yellow for comic, and then the kind of the red, 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 red blue, blue yeah. with a little yeah. bit of gold, gold on there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, I am fond of the, the Miles Morales suit. I yes. actually think it's yeah. cool. I, I like the Superior Spider-Man, the Doc Ock Spider-Man. Right? Yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah. I didn't like the um, the the tentacles. That uh, they had on there mm-hmm. because that was too on the nose for Doc Ock. Right, but the colors and everything, the and the the tech that was in it. Right, yeah. you weren't seeing that from the Iron Man stuff before right. that. That's right. true. Just right. looks really cool. I like the way it functioned. I'd yeah. even yeah. say not. I I don't have a PS4, but I really it kind of grew oh, on me really good. Cool. Oh, the the, uh, the with the white spider the white on, on yeah, yeah. It looks really good in that video game. Yeah, that game is fantastic for mm. just seeing the costumes that I, they put. I in don't there. have five hundred dollars to get a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Unless you have it, or just let me borrow yours. <laughs> <laughs> so Spider Man with the real web shooters or the bio web shooters? No, the I, real. The you real shoot shooters. Shut your dirty yeah. mouth. I'm just making sure. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Sam Raimi. <laughs> Sam, yeah, that Raimi. was a bad idea. Yeah. I don't know. Was it Sam took, Raimi or was it a movie producer? It's a movie no, producer. I think it was Sam Raimi. It was Sam Raimi. I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea for that for that Peter it Parker and that you know. Away. Well, but but that Peter Parker was Wasn't never really smart. portrayed as being yeah. a really smart guy. Like he, he just awkward. Yeah, there was like little comments here and there to like say like that he was smart, but he wasn't a guy who invented his own things. Yeah, right, he wasn't exactly. that Peter Parker. So for that movie, I think it works, but I definitely... Which is part of why I never really reached onto that Peter. Because he never felt like Peter to me. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the Andrew Garfield was too cool for... Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. They got Peter right, finally. Yeah, Yeah, they got him. Totally. So, yeah, well, I think we all know our favorite actor playing Spider-Man has been the current one. Um, May not be the best movies... But <laughs> we'll get, we'll definitely, get in there. we'll get into that a little bit later. later. I, I, I just had to throw. I'm, just, I had to throw I'm just like a broken record. Just Shut your shade. dirty mouth. Throwing <laughs> shade. Uh. Okay, so let's move on and let's get our listener feedback section. And now let's see what all of our geek rock stars have to say. So on this listener feedback, we asked, who you, who's your favorite Spider-Man villain? Villain. And honestly, that is one of the more important questions Big time. to the psychology of, of Spider-Man. So he's, we'll, got, he's got the second most impressive rogue of villains. Third. Second. Third. third. Second. You're going to say Batman's number one. Batman's number one. Flash is number two. Nah, uh, not uh, even Flash close. No, no I, t- I put Spider-Man as number two, Flash number three. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm wrong, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm saying okay, that's your opinion. Outstanding. So, and we will hit hit some of our favorite villains after this. But we're uh, we got to cut. I put these in really late, so we didn't get too many responses. So I apologize. But uh, let's see. Our favorite Spider-Man villain from uh, Dino from the huh? podcast. Huh? I like saying it. Uh, growing up, I used to watch the old school Spider-Man cartoon, the '67 reruns. For some reason, I always liked Rhino. Which, oh, Rhino. That's all an right. interesting take. And was ticked off as all get out that he was wasted in Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I 100% mm-hmm. agree. Right. Mm-hmm. Man, such potential just crapped on. Yep. Uh, Crystal Midget. I get to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I watched the 90s cartoon and never read the comics because she was too poor. Her words, not mine. Uh, but always loved the lizard. Okay. His, his backstory is beautifully tragic. Uh, mostly, I love the ones I could sympathize with. Venom and Carnage were the coolest, but I never sympathized with them. Doc Ock was also iconic. Okay, so I can't just pick one. I, I get that. I hear you. <laughs> uh, the voice, Todd, uh, said Doc Ock. Uh, Doc Ock was smart, and the visuals of, of him moving and fighting with those uh, sinuous extra arms was also highly entertaining. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sinuous. Sinuous. That, that's a Todd word. Oh, he's very vocabularic. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> and you just made up a word. I vocabulary. did. Right. Vocabulary. Okay, I'm right. I'm going to bring up my dictionary now. <laughs> and finally, Daniel Houston also said Doc Ock. Mm-hmm. Since I was a kid, I thought his character was awesome and his intellect has always given Spider-Man a run for his money. So that's, True. That, that's mm-hmm. some of... What are some of your favorite villains? And we're not going to go too deep into this because that would be its own show. But really, give me a couple of your favorite I'll just, villains. I'll give you the top two. Okay. Venom, Eddie Brock. <laughs> Okay. Is my first, and Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, is mm-hmm. my second. Never been my favorite. I've never liked the Osborns. I know they play such an important part now. Not all of them. Norman. <laughs> yeah, not all the goblins. Just <laughs> well, Hobgoblin. I mean, no, on. just one goblin. Yeah, yeah. Norman Osborn. Yeah, he was awesome. Hobgoblin was scarier than Green Goblin. Mm-hmm. And now he really was. There's, there's one goblin, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. I'm a big MCU nut, like mm-hmm. you all know. So uh, mine are Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio nice. and um, Michael Keaton as the Vulture. Oh, that I think was a good that one. those two villains are some of the MCU's best villains yeah. that yeah. we've had throughout the entire universe. They're they're down to earth. They're they're just they're perfect for Spider Man and for what. Um, for what that universe needs. Interestingly know. enough, two villains I don't much care for in the comics. Yeah. But yeah, done beautifully mm-hmm. in the MCU. I agree. Yeah. Well, I have my I have my two my two favorites aren't any that you really see in the mainstream. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you know of Craven because Craven, right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he's right. he hasn't really made that that Jump leap yet. yet. Mm-hmm. But you know who I re- always loved, and I don't think he's ever gotten the proper attention is Tombstone. Yeah, neat yeah. character. Mm-hmm. Okay. He is, he, I mean, to me, he is ultra evil uh, Punisher. Well, he's, well, he's <laughs> Solomon Grundy, isn't he, basically? He's like a Marvel version of Solomon Grundy. Le- mm-hmm. Not quite as he's strong, not dead. but yeah, he's okay. not dead. He's but, not dead. He's just an albino, and he's very creepy. Okay. <laughs> Every now and then, I catch a story, and there was a an anthology, I can't remember what, but they did a whole Tombstone story mm-hmm. where he played the kind of the sympathetic protagonist in the story. Hmm. And it was one of the best things I ever read, how he views Spider-Man, you know, what was going on, some more evil people than him doing evil things to a guy who was at this point trying to go straight, mm-hmm. but, you know, eventually didn't. But yeah. Oh, have, have we, I, I know one of my favorite. Okay, so the Sinister Six, like all of them. Yeah, the Sinister Six. It, it would, be, would be, I mean, I just like any one of those, like if, 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 if it's one or all six of them, it's, it, it's always going to be good entertainment for me. But we have forget, we've forgotten the most evil, most diabolical villain of the Spider-Man rogues gallery. J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> oh. <sighs> no. He's not, he's not a villain, yes, but he's he bad. Is. No, no he's he, not. Is, he, is a, he can get he gets the entire media. Look look at what happened in Far From Home. <laughs> he's an antagonist. He's he's an he's he's a story he, piece. No, he hates Spider Man. so he's not allowed to Sp- hate you're not Spider Man has not saved him, him on multiple times, has saved his son multiple oh, times, mm-hmm. and yet still he he does anything and everything to get it in his way, to, in his power, to make sure that the worst things happen to Peter Which Parker. is actually why I love Ultimate J. Jonah Jameson, because they evolved the character. Mm-hmm. Started hating him, but as Spider-Man continued to do things, mm-hmm. his opinion softened. Nice. And that was, that was a nice touch. I think that's what I was thinking of just now. I was like, doesn't he kind of turn around a little bit? But yeah, that's, yeah, no. that's what that kind of and, and I know we need to move on to the main event, but one more I have to mention is the 80s version of Kingpin. You know, with the one with his head in the middle of his chest? Yeah. Oh, that, that was the version in the Spider Verse. Well, yeah, yeah, I know, but that, oh, okay. was, that was the, in the comics. That was yeah. Well, I, I, just, yeah, I just like he the did dominating big, football shoulder, <laughs> oh. like, white um, suit. Such a great character. Real quick before, uh, because you mentioned him, um, just real quick around the table, who would you cast as Craven? <sighs> I think that that's going to be our next villain for. He's too old, but I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. Would be Henry Rollins. <laughs> What do you think, Jason? I, okay. I, I didn't expect this question. Um, <laughs> da- uh, Danny Trujillo, is that his name? Oh, Ooh, Danny Trejo. Trejo. Okay. Danny Trejo. Yeah, right on. Good. Again, still a little old, but I that's yeah. mine. Honestly, um, I know he's not, I think he's going to be playing a different character. I think they're already kind of, but mm-hmm. Keanu. Uh, too sad. Hard to see him bulk play. Him up, bulk him up a little bit. I, no, I want to see him as Moon Knight. Believe me. I think yeah. he'd look, yeah. be amazing as Moon Knight. Moon Knight. But Craven might be might be a really good side one, too. Mm-hmm. I could put him. What was yours? Uh, mine's John Hamm. 
as Craven. Yeah, as Craven. Yeah. Give him like I, full hmm. beard. Like, yeah, I gonna, think you can scruff him up enough to where he I could, could see be, him uh, as Vandal Savage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's oh. what I think he would play oh. in All right. DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's throw that out to the people in, in the on the the tubes and the internets too. Like, wh- who who do you think who's Craven your best should, fan? Cast? Craven Hunter should be yeah. in the MCU. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Outstanding. Hmm. Nice. Okay, let's move on to our main event. Now it's time for the main event. Okay, on this ep- this version of the main event, we're doing our top five Spider-Man moments or stories. Um, or versions of, I guess, on some of these. <laughs> So um, I'm gonna I'm just jumping right in, and my number five is the the first my first um, touch in with Spider Man. The reason why I learned how to read at four instead of five, and that was the Electric Company's version of Spider Man, <laughs> because you could you didn't know what Spider Man was saying unless you could read, and so I learned. I that's why I learned to read, is so I would know what Spider Man was saying. Interestingly enough, yeah, he was my first Spider Man I was supposed to do. For many many years, I thought Spider Man couldn't talk. Yeah. Because of that. Because of the oh, thought the bubble. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but it was so cool. I mean, that was, honestly, they did their job. Yeah. A lot of kids wanted to learn to read because of that. Mm-hmm. Lies? Uh, mine is uh, Captain America Civil War because that is the first appearance of the best Spider-Man that we've oh, ever film. had on film. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the film. Sorry. Right. Um, yeah, I think Tom Holland... Uh, knocked it out of the park in that movie, and I think he continues to knock it out of the park with every time we see him on screen. Best Fair thing enough. about him is he he is both a good Peter and a good Spider Man. Yes, yeah. exactly. not like the Toby was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Toby was a pretty good Spider Man, horrible Peter. Andrew was a decent Spider Man, horrible. Yeah, you know, exactly. yeah. yeah. Over the, yeah it's mm-hmm. like he's a great balance of the character that. And right, he's, so. when he does gymnastics and acrobatics, he like, does. Like yeah. we, you were saying that when when uh, like kids want to see Spider Man in the hospital. That he mm-hmm. he goes in and he actually like does the poses and stuff like that. Yeah. He'll do backflips and stuff. Mm-hmm. For that. Yeah. Yes. He's the right age. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number uh, five. Um, oh, I am so sorry. Who who loved the lizard? In Midget. our Mid- crystal midget. Crystal, crystal midget. midget. I am I am right there with you because my number five is shed. Mm. It is. It's a three uh, three comic issue thing from the Amazing Spider Man, and basically it is uh, Doctor Kirk Connors finally succumbing or giving in to the the lizard that the lizard brain that is that is inside of him, and he goes absolutely nuts yeah. and goes after different uh, people that fi- that he felt uh, that he feels has wronged him, and uh, with uh, the the murder of one of his professors and uh, some of his friends, and then finally gets to his son. And and Spider-Man tries to race to to get to him and does not make it. Mm-hmm. And oh. and Connors actually uh, eats his son to, to the dismay Oof. of Connors screaming in terror, like almost a Black Mirror issue. Uh, Ooh, Garth uh, Ennis uh, wrote this episode, didn't oh, he? Oh, that's uh, dark. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, Let's move on to something happier. Okay. I hope, Jason. Yeah, I know I have a, a little more uplifting. Okay, so amazing spider-man 229 and 230 is called nothing stops the juggernaut Mm. this is the first time that they battled and they battled two huge battles in both two one and 229 one 230 uh what's cool about that is this is the spider-man right after he understands uncle ben's words Mm -hmm. because this is the spider-man who is going up against a foe far more powerful than him Mm. does everything he can to stop him fails then goes back and tries a second round and does manage to slow the juggernaut mm-hmm. down for quite a long time, but to s- sunk him in 40 feet of concrete, mm-hmm. you know, wet concrete. And eventually, of course, juggernaut escapes, but it takes a long time. Mm-hmm. And it's the heart of Spider-Man. Like, like, I will do everything I can to do the right thing. And, nice. th- and that's the pinnacle story. And it's a good juggernaut story, too, because you get to learn a little about Kane. Nice. My number four is the death of the Stacys. Mm. Um, everybody talks about the Gwen Stacy, but they don't talk about Captain Stacy dying. Mm-hmm. You know, a, two months beforehand, right? Yeah. Um, and that whole story, when looked at together, is so tragic. Oh, it, it mm-hmm. makes it it makes Gwen Stacy's death even worse than mm-hmm. what it, than what it normally would be. Yeah. Yes, I mean, especially when 
Peter had finally found somebody that he could confide into. Right. Well, mm-hmm. and then and then his, her father was like, yeah, make that's sure, what I was make sure, about. Yeah. yeah, make sure that Gwen is safe. Like, make sure you protect her. And yeah. then, and unfortunately, does not. And then he didn't support the head. That's the problem. Always support the head. Ouch. Oh, Jeez, and ow. we met the creator, and oh, his name is escaping me. Uh, we met him. Someone for Punisher, right? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, Jerry Conway. Thank Jerry you. Conway. Jerry Conway. We met Jerry Conway. We asked him, why, Jerry? Did you kill Gwen <laughs> Stacy? And so, yeah. And he, said, he didn't answer. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he answered with he did, a finger. He, ch- right? he chuckled. No, he chuckled. It's, it, it's the same reason why I killed Robin. <laughs> <laughs> you take way too much pride in that. You yes, go ahead, I do. You and Carl, uh, My number four is uh, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Ah, uh, first okay. time that we ever saw him on the big screen in a blockbuster setting and for the time it was it was great it oh, was well, amazing yeah, yeah in a time where comic book movies were few and far in between this was one that just knocked out of the park and everyone could really get behind i'll never forget the scene in the middle of the fire when he's throwing the pumpkins at him and yes. he does all the jumps mm-hmm. and it's like it's spider-man yeah. it really is spider-man mm-hmm. so yeah i know what you mean nice uh, my number four is it's a series called Back in Black. This should be it's it was done in two thousand seven. Oh was kind yeah, of, I know. It was one. kind of right off right off the cusp of Civil War and Peter actually revealing himself to be Spider Man and basically uh, Mary Jane him and Aunt May are out and Aunt May gets shot mm-hmm. by an assassin and even without. Um, like thinking, like without any hesitation, he just zips zips her down to the hospital. Not even in costume; he's Peter Parker, mm-hmm. and he zips and he zips her down to the hospital. And basically, he dons the black suit, not the symbiote, but dons the black suit right. and goes ballistic and goes after the person that shot Aunt May. Right. Nice. Yeah, and that's what you want to see. Yeah. Well, it's mm-hmm. like you know, he's not; he's an adult now. Now he's grown up, and he is ticked off. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, Aunt May would go on to live and die another twenty six or twenty seven. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, exactly. And then get younger and hotter, and younger, with every... hotter. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. We may see something like that play out in the next Spider Man movie. That's definitely a scene that could be made. Right? Could be. Mm. Yeah. All right. So my number four. So when I started reading Spider Man uh, and collecting comics, reading Spider Man regularly was was in uh, ninety three, and the Clone Saga, which is panned very highly as being one of the worst spider-man arcs of all time although it's gotten a little bit of sympathy i wouldn't agree with it's that. Got a little bit of sympathy later on mm-hmm. but in uh, spider-man 75 the book that i think eventually became peter parker spider-man i'm not sure but just spider-man 75 it was the last issue of the clone saga where it was revealed that it wasn't the jackal that was behind the whole thing it was Norman Osborn, dun, 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 dun. who had been alive the whole time, and this was the first time he had returned since he got impaled by the Goblin Glider mm-hmm. way back in the you know earlier days. Um, so Norman Osborn was the brain behind it, and he was back in a big way. And look at what he's done since then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. All sorts of things. Yeah, not so nice actually. Come to think of it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing's been nice from Norman. Right. Okay, number three. Mm-hmm. Um, I I. Did the movie enter the Spider Verse? Now, it's what we were talking about earlier. Miles is not my favorite Spider Man. He's not even close. However, I to me that is the best interpretation of Spider Man that we've seen on screen. Um, the whole multiverse, the way it's done, um, just such a fantastic story. I like to see the multiple Spider Mans. Mm-hmm. It's just fun. So I have a question about that. I have an answer. Let's see if they match. The older Spider-Man, the one that's that got the little pop belly and everything, Mm -hmm. isn't that um, isn't that uh, the Spider-Man San Raimi Spider-Man supposed to be? They wanted Tobey Maguire to play the role, but for whatever reason, I can't remember its scheduling conflict. Okay, this is going to be a spoiler. So you haven't seen it. Which you should have if you're a Spider-Man fan. But if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. So that means that Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is dead now. Uh no he didn't die. No you're th- you're thinking no, the blonde thinking Spider-Man the, thinking the one who was combination Ben Riley Chris the Pine Spider-Man Chris Pine Spider-Man was from Miles Morales's universe that one died the one that came through from mm-hmm. the other universe where he was older he's and uh, he was divorced your mouse and everything Spider-Man. like that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. he was the one that was supposed to be Tobey Maguire right oh okay yeah. and that was actually not only. Tobey Maguire, but also supposed to be the closest thing to 616 Spider-Man. Yes. Right, right, right. Because right. the one who died, Chris Pine Spider-Man, was a combination of Ben Riley and Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Lies? Uh, my number three is uh, Death of uh, Spider-Man from the Ultimate Universe. Um, mm-hmm. That was the kind of the passing of the torch moment to Miles Morales um, in a really like rough last couple pages that like he died protecting Aunt May from the Green Goblin and Aunt May and um, Mary Jane were there as he was having his last moments and he just was like my reason for being here was to protect you and that's what I did and mm-hmm. then he just goes out and it it's a it's a rough couple pages. Yeah. I don't feel so no good. Dud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, same same kind of thing. Uh-huh. Right, right. Yep. Um, so my number three is the MT- and I completely forgot about this the 2003 MTV CGI version of Spider Man mm, okay. with with Neil Patrick Harris and Lisa Loeb and Ian Ziering as the as the cavalcade cast. And I I remember when that first came out, I was just blown away. I'm like, yes, this is actually this is the Spider Man that I wanted. This is the Spider Man that I've I've been wanting for for quite some time now, and I I loved it. It's 13 episodes, but I wish they would have done more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. the, the animation doesn't stand up real well, though. Doesn't doesn't hold up. But that was early 2000s. So, well, no, no, it's, it's, you know what? It's stylized. Neither does, yeah. neither does uh, uh, the Electric Company Spider Man. So well, I mean, yeah. Well, neither does my number one. But that's yeah. <laughs> right. My number three. Okay, so Kaj. What we had discussed this in videos yes. on our YouTube channel. Uh-huh. Tune into our YouTube channel, by the way, because it's great. Absolutely. You do that. <laughs> but we've discussed this in videos when we both did a Far From Home mm-hmm. review. Yes. Okay? And at the time, I had to think. I wasn't ready to agree or disagree on your synopsis that far from home is better than spider-man 2 um i will now say in all fairness i i do hold spider-man 2 to be slightly superior and uh, and i would i'm not going to agree with you but i understand why you say that because i'm i'm kind of the same way just the opposite end of it of like two two different eras two different styles of mm-hmm. directing mm-hmm. um i i i yeah i feel that far from home kind of stepped it up a little bit so that's why it i hear you but, but and jay Gil- jay yeah. gillenhall as mysterio was great but mm-hmm. the best spider-man villain so far in any of the films has been alpha merlina's doc ock and the train scene in spider-man oh. 2 mm-hmm. still holds up as possibly one of the if not the best comic book action sequence in any film that's hard to argue yeah. so that is my number three the like train even, stop in the train nice. even and even, the battle lead up even even better than when the cranes came in so that spider-man can swing down even better than the cranes uh, yeah. i'm being facetious right now i appreciate that <laughs> I, I remember i think i remember me saying oh hell no in the movie theater when that happened i know <laughs> My number two is the um, six-issue miniseries called The Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine. I read that in the last couple months, actually. Oh, so I told you about that yeah. one, yeah. Um, usually time travel stories are convoluted and weird. This is convoluted and weird, but in a good way. It's a very interesting story. It's a really interesting story. It's actually easy to follow. Um, you have Wolverine and Spider-Man. It, it starts out in the, as cavemen, and you're like, what the heck just happened here? Right, right. <laughs> and it's just, it's just a really fantastic read. I'm not giving any spoilers at all. This is definitely one of those books you need to pick up, and I hope that they do an animated out of this one. Yeah, I that'd think be cool. It should be mm-hmm. right. Uh, my number two is Superior Spider-Man. Oh, uh, so good. Just I like the story of uh, and the black and red suit is awesome. Black and red suit. I love that Doc Ock um, going into his body and, and redemption and redemption for him. Um, I wish they would have. I don't know, it's hard to say. I kind of wish they would have left him dead or really actually killed him off because it would have been more meaningful. But that's just that's just comic books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> no, we've we've kind of jumbled on it before like even in this podcast um so who do you think do you think he was the better spider-man uh no i don't think so i think there's still he did have redemption but i think there still was something about him that wasn't truly a hero okay. i think he did more good than peter ever did i, I kind of agree i think yeah i think I, he was the better I, Spider-Man. as a person i just the stories i like peter as uh, you know as logical but if you, if you want to be a, an efficient superhero, yeah, like with the, with the little spider tech nanonites mm-hmm. that were basically just scoured the entire New York City to see if there was any trouble. I think though that there's 
more to, i think the whole point of that though is there's more to being a hero than just efficiency and when you get into that sort of thing where he has something his spider drones monitoring every inch of the city that becomes a, a security question that's right. something that we deal with day to day do you want every corner of every street monitored at all times okay what it, is that is he, Yes, he's doing good by protecting the city, but is he doing good by... Where's the line? Yeah, where's the I, line? I, I, I and can I see th- that. And I get what you guys are saying for sure, but I think that's... And that's part of that story, is mm-hmm. where is that line? Yeah. He was more efficient and he was better, but was he truly being a hero or was he just... And, and, and it that, also, would, that would go on to his intention, like just mm-hmm. his, his intention, like Peter's intention would be just to make sure that everybody's safe. Yeah. Ox, uh, Octavius is more of like, it's a police state. He wants like, to control. Yeah. 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 And it also comes down to the whole psychology of people and heroes with flaws. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man's love for his flaws. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. All right. My number... What? Oh, sorry. Is it your number it's two? Kaj, it's Kaj. Kaj. Sorry, I'm jump, jumping ahead here. <laughs> uh, my number two is Craven's Last Hunt. Oh. Just when one one series, one story arc where Spider-Man just fails miserably. Probably just, his most crushing and first like, most crushing defeat. Craven just took him to town and buried him. Yep. <laughs> and then goes after uh, Vermin and just beats him to a bloody pulp. And then you find out that Peter really isn't dead. He was just tranquilized. And then he digs himself up off the grave. And then Vermin gets le- released back into the wild again and goes after Peter because he thinks he's the one that did it to him. Right. And then Craven's like, I'm done. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and Craven's end was right. very shocking for right, comics right. at the time. Yes. All right. My number two um, unusual choice, but Batman and Spider Man crossed over in two comics. Who won? Um, hmm? Who won? They didn't Wolverine. fight. Oh. They didn't fight, which made it more interesting because usually in crossovers there is a fight. Mm-hmm. But it was the great. It was the greatest dynamics for um, them working together, and mm-hmm. you know Batman and Spider Man just. I don't even have to say any more. Just imagine those two, you know, working together and Batman with this whole my city, I can't stand you, get mm-hmm. away from me. Um, Spider Man pretty much there was one scene where Spider Man pretty much put him in his place and said, you know, you you don't have any choice because you're not as powerful as I am. And, you know, so they, they nice. did it. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, my number one comes from the animated series, um, and that was Farewell Spider Man. It was the last episode, actually, you can pretty much take the last season, which was um, Secret Wars. But you get to see that last scene with Spider Man picks up Stan Lee, and they actually have a nice conversation. Like, this is important what you do because you give people hope. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, especially now, it's just such a great story. Yeah. Um, I, I recommend. Go to iTunes, buy the last season, watch that whole thing. It's, it's all Secret Wars, but it's really, Very cool. really nice. good. Nice. Very nice. Uh, my number one uh, is Civil War, the comic book. Uh, that mm. moment where he pulls off the mask and mm-hmm. shows his identity to the entire world. I think that was just that was a huge piece for him. I hated that moment. Uh, but- <laughs> <laughs> I said this before, I'll just say it real quick. It's so unfortunate that they did not capitalize on J. Jonah Jameson's reaction mm-hmm. for right. like 20 books after that Be- you know because he's been working for him for years yeah. and he's, yeah. he's been trashing him the entire time mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. i yeah and i think there definitely was more that they could have done with that moment but mm-hmm. just the moment itself it, w- mm-hmm. it, it had always amazing. just been such a point that he never revealed his identity and you always expect someone else to reveal it because that's usually how those things kind of go but he right. openly decided to he do sure that. did right yeah. right uh, my number one is uh, near and dear to my heart, the '67 Spider-Man, the original, like the oh. when they when they did the first animated series when Stan Lee moved to California and started doing the animated animated series of this. It the the classic Spider-Man theme that has been through at least all all the movies that it's in there one time. But so uh, Michael Bublé has made a made a hit out of it as oh, well nice. too. And it's, I mean, it's, it's crude. I mean, like when he's swinging around, it's basically like five or six different poses that they've always had. And then even if it's like, well, I have to get there, it's a long way, but I have to get there. And you just, they just keep doing it on recycle and recycle until they finally like, all right, I'm here. Well, Stan started going to the beach, start smoking reefer. (laughs) (laughs) Start doing naked pictures. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. But that, that would always be, that was my first introduction to Spider-Man and I've, I've loved him ever since. Nice. Nice. All right, for me, it's the amazing number one, the Amazing Spider-Man issue three hundred. It's the first 
full bodied <laughs> appearance of Eddie Brock mm-hmm. as Venom. Although, mm-hmm. as Blyze pointed out to me earlier, in 299, there's a tease picture with black and the smile. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, the 300 introduced Spider Man's greatest villain, basically the anti Spider Man um, in Venom. Yeah. And I can say no more about that other than they need to get him right in a film. <laughs> Maybe the MCU will eventually. Maybe. Well, then Fox still own it. And with that, that's a show. Um, go to the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Go to the use column. We paid extra for it. I almost missed that. Um, but you got it. I did. <laughs> um, go to the Facebook. Go to the Twitter at iHeartGeekShow. Go to the Instagram. Go to the YouTube. Go everywhere else and talk to us and tell people about us. <laughs> subscribe to us. Subscribe and like to us. us everywhere. Tell other people to subscribe to us. Yeah. Share our stuff. We would appreciate that. That would mean lots a lot of sharing. To us. Sharing would be great. Sharing, sharing is, is caring. caring. Is caring. Yes. Sharing is the heroic thing to do. Yes. Okay. And so until next time, I'm the amazing dub. I'm the superior Blize. I'm the web of Kaj. I am the spectacular PB and Jason. And the winner gets to say it. Keep on geeking on. You've been listening to iHeartGeek. Our Twitter account is at iHeartGeekShow. Hope you enjoyed the show. 